Good morning. This morning I'm going to show you how to draw the leg for this shaker round stand. But before we do, let's open the SketchUp drawing that I we ended with last week and look at the front view and change the camera to parallel projection. That's important. And I'll also get rid of the pedestal here by clicking the pedestal layer uh, so that it's not visible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a JPEG in here and I'm going to scale it and pin it to the origin. The JPEG I'm going to bring in is nothing but a picture, a digital image that I use. You can use any kind of a camera, your smartphone or uh, anything, a digital camera. Take a picture of the leg in the book and then simply import it, which is what I'm going to do this right now. So I'll go to import. It's on my desktop. Uh, it's called leg JPEG. You can see the image of it here. Say open. And now all I need to do is click twice, any place, and drag. And I'm going to watch the VCB and I'm going to click this when it's approximately 12 inches. Now, if I blow this up a little bit, or zoom in I should say, not blow up, and measure things, um, I can get a feeling for how inaccurate this picture is. For instance, this is the zero, zero axis right here in this picture. So I'm going to take my tape measure tool. Over here, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine inches here. And I notice it's 10 point, or well, it's 10, 10 approximately 10 and 3 eighths. So I need a scale factor uh, to scale this thing by in one direction. And I can get that by using the number 9, which is what's on the image, and the 10 and 3 eighths, which is in the VCB, to come up with a scale factor of less than 1. Let me pause here for a moment, do that offline. Okay, I'm back. And I calculated a scale factor with a uh, a hand calculator offline. And so what I want to do now is I want to use the scale tool. And the the scale factor I calculated was the this scale here along the red axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this grip to say red scale about opposite point. I know it's going to go smaller so I'll drag it smaller. And now in the VCB, I'll type my scale factor in, which was 0 0.867-469-879-518. Enter. Now, that was a lot of digits, but since I used a hand calculator, which has a lot of digits of accuracy, I chose to use it. I want to go check how well I did. So I'll come in here, go with the tape measure tool, start it, start there, come over to the other side. Now this should be exactly 9. And notice what it says down on the VCB, 9 inches. That's pretty close. So let's do the same thing in the other direction. I'm going to stay on the blue axis even though this picture isn't perfect because when I took a picture of the book the page didn't lay flat so the picture is distorted a little bit. So I'm going to stay on the blue axis and come to this line here. And notice it says 9 and 39 64 Well I'll go offline and um, calculate another scale factor using 9 and 39 64 Okay, I'm back. And so now I want to scale this. This time I'm going to scale it along the blue axis. And my scale factor now is 0 
936-585-536. I think I got that wrong. I'm going to start over. 936-585-536. Eight five four, and I'll go in and check this results. I should get eight inches this time because that's what this is seven eight. So I'll start here at the axis. This is an approximation kind of thing. You want to get as close as you can, but don't. Don't go crazy uh, doing it. You can see it's approximately nine inches. Oh, I used the wrong scale factor. Well, I could scale it again. Uh, what happened was I assumed that this was nine inches long like the other one, but it's eight inches long. So I scaled it for nine. What I really want to do is scale it um, for 8. So I'll just use this new factor of the real number being 8 and the current uh, measured number being 9, which means I want this to be smaller. So I need a, uh, a scale factor less than 8. And I could just simply um, come up with one real quick. And it's this one's real easy. So I'll scale this again. The scale factor I have is 0 0.8888888888. And now if I measure it, I should be I should be right on the money. Pretty close, approximately eight. Okay, that's good enough. Now we have something to copy. What I'm going to do, start here, and I know from reading the book that the thickness of this material here from top to bottom is two inches. So I'm going to take a line, I'm going to start here, I'm going to come down along the blue axis two inches. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me endpoints to attach to. An endpoint there and an endpoint there. I have to do the same thing here. I don't know exactly what this dimension is, but I'm going to use something that makes sense. It reads about 47 sixty-fourths. I'm going to make it 48 sixty-fourths. Okay, so I have an endpoint here, I have an endpoint here, and it's three quarters of an inch, 48 sixty-fourths. That makes sense. Now I'm going to use the arc tool and see if I can approximate this curve. Now, one thing I don't like, right at, right off the bat, is that if I use, if I approximate the curve pretty closely, let me get the rest of this in here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to hit escape. And we're going to 
create a line that's horizontal. Whoops, let me use the line tool. Create a line that's horizontal out to about, oh, I'm going to make it one inch long. Now I'm going to use the curve tool. The arc tool. And when I get that blue line, it says it's tangent to that little line that I drew. And it's pretty close to what the uh, curve is. So I'm going to accept that. I think I will accept that. All right, now I'm going to try the top. That looks very good, right? Right? Right about there. So I'm going to accept that and say that's close enough to the shaker leg. Okay. Now that I've got that, I don't need the JPEG anymore. I can delete it. What I want to do is go to the ISO image now. And looking in the book, I know that this piece, this is the center layer of this piece. We know it's 5 eighths of an inch thick. Half of that is 5 sixteenths. So what I'm going to do, come up here, come out, 5 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to come down here and try to coax my inference engine. Now I have to put a little bit of a round on this, about an eighth of an inch round. And that's just judging by the look in the book. So, easiest way to do that, use, come over here an eighth of an inch, down an eighth of an inch, up an eighth of an inch, Use the circle tool. Okay, now I want to do the same thing on the bottom. Come out 5 sixteenths. For some reason my inference engine isn't... Uh... Let me try it the other way. There we go. Now I'll come over an eighth. Use the circle tool again. Now I'll clean things up with the eraser.
Now at this point I have to decide how to get the surface on here. And there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to bring in another tool here. This tool is called Curvaloft. It's a plug-in, you can get it online. And what it does is it creates surfaces for interesting shapes. I'm going to, go, I'm going to try something here, see how it works. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of these surfaces and these lines here. So I'm just left of this. Now I'm going to select all of it and go to my curve aloft tool. Notice I've got an outline here and it wants to know if I like it so I'll just click yes. And there we go and I'll exit the tool. Right click exit. Alright I have a nice surface here and so I can finish it up by simply copying this moving it, let me do that, use the control key to copy, move it along the x-axis, and now I'm going to flip along green, that was the direction that I moved it. Notice by the way the Curveloft tool made this a group, so I'm going to bring this back together here now I'm going to explode the group both of them this line I'm going to hide not soften but hide same thing with this line. Actually I may have to do this a couple times with this line because that was a two-piece line. Let's look underneath. There we go. I'm going to hide that uh, line as well. And now I'm going to make Uh, I may not have to yet. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll use the pencil tool here. Grab an endpoint down here. And just put a surface there. I'll do the same at the other end. All right, now, I mentioned there are a couple of ways to do this. One of the things you could have done is use the follow me tool to create this curve in a little shape here and use this line that I've hidden here as a path and use the follow me tool to create this top curve here. Same thing on the bottom and then again splice these together as halves. When you use the follow me tool you often end up with a lot of cleanup. This Curveloft tool I found to be more reliable and easier to use. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to actually go through the steps of using the uh, follow me tool um, simply because there's a lot of cleanup to do on, on screen. So we'll just leave it at this and I'll show you how to put the dovetail on here now. First thing we want to do is make this a component, call it leg, and I'm going to bring, with the layers, I'm going to bring the pedestal in here, look at the bottom of the pedestal. And um, let me start with a leg 
that goes along the green axis. In order to do that, I'm going to have to rotate this one. I'll use the rotate tool. I'll click here. I'll out along the green. Yep, that's the way I want it. Rotate it 90 degrees. Now I'm going to give myself a place to tie this to. I'm going to draw a temporary line here. That'll give me a line with the center point right there. And I can take the center point here. Actually, it's going to be an end point because the way I created this, um, it was two halves and I put it together. Um, and in fact, if I, if I show you in geometry, that's the center point right there. So I'll use that to connect there. Now I can unhide. All right, now what I want to do is I want to go into edit component mode here. Just trace this out. Get rid of the rest of the model. Bring this up top. Make sure I've got the right place here. Now I can't erase this line, I don't believe. Oh, I got lucky I can. It depends on how this curve ends. Oh, I remember. That's why I put that one inch line down here to make sure that this surface here, if I show you the... Yes, uh, this line here is a one inch line. Let me measure that and make sure I'm telling the truth. One inch. I purposely put that there along the red axis so that I wouldn't have a curve in this area so that this surface and these surfaces here, this these two inner surfaces would be at the same surface so I could erase this line. Had I used, had I not done that and used the um, arc tool, I could have ended on a curve here which would mean that this surface and these surfaces wouldn't be um, flat and I wouldn't be able to erase this line. I could hide it, but I wouldn't be able to erase it. Uh, so fortunate for me, I thought ahead. All right, so let me... Uh, do the same thing here. Ah, there's the problem. I didn't do that on the top surface. I didn't end with a straight line. Uh, in other words, if I look at this, I guess I'm going to have to look at it from the end. Notice that this is a sloped line, and therefore it's not on the same plane up here. And therefore you, you get this, you can't erase this line. But what we can do, we can use the shift key and hide it. Shift and erase and hide it. And now we can get rid of hidden geometry. There we go. All right, now we have a leg. We need two more. That's not a problem. What we'll do is use the Rotate Copy tool. Let me go... Um, Uh, I hope that's the center of this thing. I'm trusting that it is. And if it is, I'm going to use that 
and the rotate tool to make a copy. Hit control, type 120, and there you go. I can do the same thing again. Hit the control key, come out here any place, type 120, uh, I think that was 12, that's better. Now I've got three legs in the right place. And let's just look at this from the uh, front. All right. There we go. Next week, uh, we'll put the tabletop on and we'll have completed this model. See you then.